Social Studies World History 15 Describe the impact of industrialization and urbanization. Examine the political ideas of Karl Marx. The history of all hitherto existing society is the history of class struggles. The Communist Manifesto Karl Marx has been described as a philosopher, an economist, a historian, a sociologist, a political theorist, and a journalist. However, his longest lasting fame has been due to his actions as a socialist revolutionary. Marx was born on May the 5th, 1818 in Trier, Germany, and was one of nine children. Ethnically, Marx was Jewish and was descended from a long line of rabbis. His father had broken with that tradition by converting to Protestantism and joining the Evangelical Church of Prussia prior to Marx's birth. This resulted in Marx receiving a secular rather than a rabbinical education in early life. First through homeschooling with his father and then enrolling in Trier High School and the University of Bonn. Marx's secondary and college educations were obtained at schools that were known for left-leaning political positions and views that were considered radical for the times. From an early age, he was encouraged to question the status quo and to critique the pressing issues of his day. While at Bonn, Marx drifted in and out of revolutionary societies and achieved only moderate academic success until 1836 when he became engaged to Jenny von Westphalen and transferred to the University of Berlin to enter law school. In 1837, Marx joined the Young Hegelians, a leftist philosophical group, and they eventually came under governmental scrutiny in Germany. His affiliation with that group altered his job prospects as a university professor and led to his exit from Berlin. He then moved to Cologne and became a journalist, writing for the radical newspaper Rheinschitz Zeitung, or Rhineland News which eventually fell under Prussian government censorship and was banned. An editorial criticizing the Russian monarchy caught the attention of Tsar Nicholas I, and he put pressure on the Prussian government until they complied with his request to close down the newspaper, which they did in 1843. That same year, Marx married Jenny von Westphalen after a seven-year engagement and they immigrated to France where he worked in quick succession for two even more increasingly radical newspapers. He drifted along the fringes of several radical groups until August of 1844 when he met and struck up a conversation with Frederick Engels, a like-minded revolutionary with whom Marx would develop a lifelong academic collaboration. Engels had just recently published a pamphlet entitled the Condition of the Working Class in England in 1844. He influenced Marx's thinking to the extent that he soon began an intense review of economic theories and arrived at a view of historical materialism. His belief that the world is changed not by ideas, but by actual physical actions and protest. In 1845, Marx's newspaper, Vorwärts or Forward, was shut down by the French government and Marx and his young family, now of four, were expelled from France. The Marxists moved to Brussels, Belgium, where he continued his economic research and leftist political activities through a secret society called the League of the Just, despite having made a pledge to the Belgian government to refrain from doing so. Engels joined Marx in Belgium, and in the summer of 1845, the two men traveled to England, to meet with another private society, the Chartists. Encountering and becoming involved with a variety of groups that all shared common goals, emboldened the two men and served to persuade them that the time had come to move their philosophies away from the secret underground movements into the open and to create a political party. They sought to organize the working classes of Europe into a mass movement that could affect change through sheer numbers. In 1847, the League of the Just reorganized into an open political organization and rebranded themselves as the Communist League. In 1848, Marx and Engels issued the platform of the Communist League, which was published in pamphlet form 
and detailed the goals and beliefs of the new party. That pamphlet is commonly called the Communist Manifesto and famously begins with the statement, the history of all hitherto existing society is the history of class struggles. The manifesto continues to detail the conflicts that Marx and Engels envisioned as clashes between the bourgeoisie or wealthy capitalist class and the proletariat or the industrial working class. They list the purpose of the League to be the defenders of the proletariat in their struggle to overthrow capitalist society and to replace it with socialism. Coincidentally in 1848, a movement to overthrow King Louis-Philippe called the June Days Uprising occurred in France. Though this event was apparently independent of influence by the manifesto, as the publication had not yet reached that country. Additional Workers' Party rebellions erupted throughout Germany where events were strongly influenced by the manifesto. Within a year of its outbreak, the movement was suppressed and Marx was expelled from Germany and had to seek refuge in England where he would live the remainder of his life. As order was restored across Europe, the Communist League disbanded the members went underground to avoid prosecution. The manifesto was not reprinted for the next 20 years, and to many observers, the movement appeared to basically be over. But among the working classes of European society, the philosophies of communism were still quietly resonating. During the hiatus, Marx continued to work behind the scenes in the International Working Men's Association which is also known as the First International, towards the goal of mobilizing the myriad of anarchist groups under the common slogan of Workers Unite, which was derived from the statement by Marx, Workers of the World Unite, you have nothing to lose but your chains. In 1870, a treason trial of German Social Democratic Party leaders was held in that same country and the primary piece of convicting evidence were the words of the Communist Manifesto. This event sensationalized the publication, and in 1872, Marx and Engels published a new German edition of the pamphlet. This time, the doctrines resonated throughout Europe so strongly that their work was published in 30 languages over the next 40 years. Though Marx died in 1883 and Engels in 1895, their philosophies lived on. The men hypothesized a universal revolution of the working classes, or labor, which would result in socialism, a socioeconomic system based on the social ownership of the factors of production. Such a revolution, they posited, would be required to abolish the exploitative working conditions experienced under capitalism. Marx hypothesized that socialism would naturally transform into a communist society, a classless, stateless society, based on common ownership and the underlying idea expressed by Marx when he said, the theory of communism may be summed up in one sentence, abolish all private property. The words of the Communist Manifesto would ultimately influence a revolution in Russia and reshape the governmental systems of numerous countries to modern times, including China, Cuba, and North Korea, to name a few. Each nation where communism gained a foothold seems to have avidly embraced Marx and Engels' basic premise. Philosophers have only interpreted the world in various ways. The point is to change it.